Okay, let's talk about the difference between piston port intake and reed valve intake. This is my piston port 48cc motorized bicycle engine. It's got a custom expansion chamber, Makuni 18mm, and this is the custom intake manifold to, to match. And the same engine. With a reed valve and a boost port. Um, a trough dremeled into the side of the aluminum cylinder. To the rear, that is. So I did a test using the same cylinder, same carburetor, same pipe, same ignition, same everything. Except one engine was a piston port and the other engine was a reed valve. And the results were rather surprising to me. I thought, I thought the reed valve would be better. But there's a nice steep hill in our neighborhood and I was just barely able to climb it on both engines. Equal. Good torque, both of them, for 48cc. Uh, then on a long, uh, flat road, they both hit the same maximum RPM. And they, they really did feel pretty much the same. Yeah. They... they they felt a little bit squeamish under uh, 22 kilometers per hour. Which is 14 miles per hour. Both of them felt really, really good. Just general use on the street. These are not set up to be racing engines. And I would recommend either one of them. But you know what? It's cheaper to have a piston port. These are the specs of the two engines. You can see, you know, like I said, this is the same engine, same porting. Uh, I changed the needle on the, uh, the piston port. A little bit leaner needle. But it gave the, look, reading the, uh, the spark plug on both of them gave the same chocolate brown color, so. Um, the leaner needle caused also the, the wide open throttle jet to be a little bit leaner, which is typical for piston port because it has a stronger uh, wave front when the, uh, the uh, piston opens the port. A reed valve is, is very gently opened, so it doesn't have a strong wave front. So it has a, the, the piston port has a stronger suction pulse to say, so it has, it typically needs a, a leaner, uh, main jet. But the needle, the leaner needle, was able to accomplish that. So, yeah. Both engines. This is a simple drawing showing how the piston opens the intake port and the intake charge comes into the crankcase. And with a reed valve, uh, the reed opens when the piston starts rising because there's a suction and the intake charge goes through the reed, goes through the window of the intake skirt of the piston into the crankcase. Now a piston port intake is a little bit odd. It, if, if this is the, uh, the rotation of the crank and the movement of the piston from from bottom dead center to top dead center. The intake port will open about 60 degrees before top dead center. And if that piston's rising, it's causing that suction, so it's sucking it in. Okay. Then it keeps going in a little bit longer just due to inertia, okay? And then some of that is pushed back towards the carburetor, which is why you need linear jetting because some of what's going past the slide 
is, is doing it for the second time due to that reversion. Okay, on the reed valve, um, when, the, when the transfer, when the piston rises and it closes the transfer, then the, the crankcase is sealed except for the, the reed valve. And that rising piston causes the suction which opens the reed valve. Now, the beginning of the intake can be earlier than here if you're at the, near the top RPM and the uh, return wave from the diffuser, which is a suction wave, arrives at the crankcase at this, at this area. So it, you can't specifically say it begins right here with the reed valve. It, it can be anywhere down here. So it will suck as the piston rises until TDC. And then as the piston starts to lower, that reed valve is closed. So all that intake in the crank, it, it's, it's sealed. And now that sealed space is beginning to shrink as the piston goes down. Okay, so you have 120 degrees of compression of the intake charge. So when that transfer port opens, you've got a nice, good little pressure to, to push that into, the, uh, into the, uh, the combustion area. So that extra pressure is better for high RPM, worse for low RPM. And on the piston port intake, you only have 60 degrees of compression. So, on a motorized bicycle engine, unless you port it to really rev like over 9,000, I would select, I would recommend the piston port. This 120 degrees compression puts more, more uh, stress on the, uh, the crankcase seals. And if you have taken apart a motorized bicycle engine, you know those crankcase seals are just they're very thin, they're very, they're very flimsy, and they wear out very fast. So that's another reason the piston port intake has the advantage over the reed. Now, even though you've got this 120 degrees of compression, a lot of the reed valves that are sold for the, uh, the motorized bicycle engines will wind up having a lot of space here above and below the reeds and a little bit to the side of them also and that reduces the compression ratio of the crankcase so so you can't say this really gives you twice the, the compression of the piston port it is more it, it's still going to be more but um, this setup helps to take care of this lack of compression by completely sealing this off. There's none of this space right here that's going to be added to the crankcase area. When that piston closes that off, that it's sealed and it's just that space right there in the crankcase. So that helps to compensate for that. But anyway, um, I would... Uh, I would recommend that people not be so anxious to get a reed valve if they're just going to use their motorized bike for street use. It, it probably, a lot of it depends upon the carburetor. I don't have an NT carb, a stock carb, or a speed carb that I can put on my bike and, and test it and say, yeah, it worked great. Or it, works like shit. I don't know. That's that's a, a big unknown right now for me. And so um, I can recommend sticking with the piston port and you know you're gonna want a good carb anyway. So why would you spend money on a reed valve when you could spend money on a carb? Uh, piston port works good. The only thing is um, the, the porting for the uh, For the intake port, 
it needs to be changed just a little bit. I, I don't remember how much. It probably varies from engine to engine. You really need to look at my uh, video about how to find the uh, port durations and become uh, skilled at doing that. And then you can accurately measure what your intake is and then know how much to change it to bring it to where you want it. On, on this test, um, the 120 degree intake duration was just right on the money. It was excellent. Good low end, good top end. You can't ask for more. Um, I think most of them come with about 110 degree duration which favors more of the low RPM power and, and less. Um, today I, I tested the 120 degree intake uh, duration engine. But yesterday I tested it when it had 100, 109 degrees, okay? And I didn't like it at all. And the day before I tested it with 131 degrees. And 131 was not as, as, as screwed up on the low RPM powers I thought it would be. It was actually, it was actually surprisingly decent. But it really wanted to rip on the, the high RPM. So the higher you want to rev, the more you got to open that intake port duration. But if you're going to make a piston port engine a racer, you can expect crappy power at low RPM and maybe instability and in it's ability to idle. So yeah, um, piston port. They come with piston port, so just find out how much you need to change the the bottom opening of the uh, the port, and uh, get a rotary tool with a little uh, thin uh, cutting disc, and use that. Some people are, are shy away from porting because they think uh, it takes expensive uh, tools to do it. No. This is the rotary tool that I use. And you can see it's a little bit fat, but I'm still able to get in there and to, to do what I want. Now I just want to show you the um, The cutting disc. Okay, you notice some of these are, are, are dark. Those are the those are the, the thicker uh, fiberglass ones, and these brown ones. These are the thin ones. I typically work with these more than I do with these. And there's this little shaft right here and it's got a screw on the end and you unscrew it and then you put the, the, the disc in place and then you put the, the screw through the hole and then screw it on. And that's what is there at the end of, oh, there we go. the end of this uh, output. So, but there are others that are, are, are thinner and there's others that um, that have uh, an extension like this one right here. It has this, this flexible cable and then this right here is very thin. This would be like really ideal for like those really small, uh, what do you call those, uh, remote control engines. Like right here, you can see how small it is, that would be like really easy to get. But then, just you have to make sure that the shaft, whatever accessory you buy has the same shaft diameter. Okay, um, I guess the only other thing I want to show you is um, my, 
a video on finding chord durations. Here it is on YouTube. Um, this is the address. I'm going to put it in the description. Um, but it's a good, it's a good video. It shows the, the two different ways to uh, get port durations. One way using the uh, degree wheel and another way of just measuring and then using an online calculator. I guess that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching.